another year, another iPhone. Today we have the iPhone XS, the current flagship by Apple. Stay with us to find out our thoughts and opinions about it and how it actually performed on our tests. The iPhone XS that we have for our test came in space grey color. Apart from this somewhat boring black color, also available are silver and gold. In the last several years Apple has been quite unimaginative in terms of color options, which is partially fixed this year since the XR has many more options. Sadly, the XS doesn't have them. The body of this phone is made of glass, which is very hard and capable of withstanding several drops without shattering. The frame is made of metal and all around the build quality is on par. The phone looks and feels sturdy and durable. The back panel is sadly a fingerprint magnet and we really recommend using a case to protect it. It's not exactly a cheap phone and you'll probably be sorry should you break it. Inside the factory box there's the usual. The phone, user manuals, USB-A to lightning cable, lightning headphones, charging brick and Apple stickers. By this time, Apple assumes that all their users have swapped to either their AirPods or some other sort of wireless headphones, and because of this, they chose not to include a dongle in the factory box. That said, let's jump into a little bit more details about it. Right at the beginning, we must say that we love the OLED display on this phone. It's truly stunning, colors are amazing, viewing angles as well, everything is as you'd expect from a top-notch display. Speaking of notches, we have one at the top of the display. We are not too fond of it, but it seems as if it's there to stay for some time. And we have to learn how to deal with it. However, its purpose is not to just sit there and be ugly. It houses many sensors including the dot projector, front facing camera, a loudspeaker and all other sensors. Yes, it's ugly, but since the rest of the phone is so nice, you soon get to terms with it and just embrace it. It's a matter of getting used to, and once you are, you don't even notice it. It's also worth to mention that the iPhone XS still supports 3D Touch, which the cheaper XR doesn't anymore. Whether you still 3 years after its introduction still consider it a gimmick or not, we must say that we like this feature and that we'd be sad to see it go. The iPhone XS is powered by the next generation Apple A12 Bionic chipset. This chipset is an absolute beast and hands down the fastest smartphone chipset at the moment. The 10S series are the first commercially available devices that had a 7 nanometer chipset inside, which only adds up to the speed of this chipset. Paired with the minimum of 4GB of RAM and 64GB of non-expandable storage, this phone does everything almost instantly. The 10S is a waterproof device as it's IP68 certified. This means the usual, the phone will survive accidental drops in water and it will be fine even after a short swim. It also uses a cool way to expel water out of it, using the speakers and their bass to move the water out. Speaking of speakers, we have stereo sound here, and it's very nice, rich, plenty loud, bassy, and overall pleasant to hear. The new version of Apple iOS only even further supplements the speed of this phone. All new iPhones came with iOS 12 pre-installed and using these devices is an experience as smooth as it gets. We've never seen it stutter, lag or have any difficulties whatsoever doing anything we put onto it. Playing high demanding games on max settings on this phone was something we really enjoyed. Speaking of gaming, another reason it's so smooth is that this phone has water cooling capabilities. So even after prolonged gaming sessions, the phone didn't heat up enough to start throttling. It's just not an issue here. When it comes to the OS itself, it's the same old iOS with several new features. It's as different as possible from Android, but love it or hate it, it's a phenomenal OS that offers great user experience. It has its quirks, but it's just one more thing that you'll have to simply accept if you choose to use this phone. There's no reason to complain about it because it won't change, and once again, once you get used to it, it's quite intuitive. The iPhone XS has a double camera setup on the back, and the cameras are simply phenomenal. It's right out there with other top-notch smartphones such as the Note 9, Pixel 3 and Mate 20 Pro. Once again, the camera has its quirks, which are annoying even for seasoned iPhone users, but it's just the way Apple envisions things. Photos made by the main camera are gorgeous, there's no noise and they're plenty sharp. 
The portrait mode is also here, and it works great, since it segments the depth in different sections in terms of how far away from the subject the background objects are. The further away, the more they are blurred. Videos captured by the main camera are excellent, with plenty of details and a stable frame rate. Videos are captured in the maximum of 4K resolution at 60fps, and they simply look stunning. When it comes to the front-facing camera, once again it produces great photos. However, here we have an issue with the portrait mode. It doesn't do that good of a job separating the subject from the background, especially when using studio, contour and stage light modes. Edges are blurred and the photos simply don't look as nice as when taken with the main camera. We have to say that we've seen better results made by some far cheaper Android phones. Videos taken by the front-facing camera are very smooth. The camera is well capable of producing crisp image and FaceTime is a real pleasure to use, assuming a stable connection. We must say that, despite their shortcomings, both of these cameras are truly amazing. They will not only do the job, but they will do it really well. As we've already said, the issue is mostly laid in the getting used to. When it comes to the connectivity, this phone has plenty of options, all but the infamous one that shall not be named. Since Apple's general philosophy is going all wireless, it shouldn't come as a surprise that all connections are wireless, or at least have a wireless alternative. Something we don't understand though is why Apple chose to stick with the lightning port in their new iPhone. MacBook and iPad, just as the majority of Android world, both use the reversible USB Type-C port for wired connections. And at this point it doesn't seem logical to stick to the lightning port. Apple is famous for their seamless ecosystem, but because of the port, the seams are visible here. In order to connect your iPhone to the MacBook, you'll have to use a dongle, albeit wireless connections are possible and flawless. We can only hope that the next generation iPhone will come with the Type-C port, which will finally unite the whole smartphone market under one standard. The battery of the iPhone XS has the capacity of 2658 a nice round number of milliamp hours. Jokes aside, this is a small battery. In 2018, when devices are well capable of lasting two days easy, the iPhone struggles to deliver a single day of heavy use. Our opinion is that the majority of its buyers are heavy users, which is why we believe that the battery is just unsatisfactory. On the other hand, fast charging is available, but to access it in a true Apple fashion, you'll have to pay extra for a fast charging brick. You don't get it by default in the box, which is just a shame, but on the other hand, Apple didn't become a trillion dollar company by giving peripherals for free. Another thing that is not free is the wireless charger. The iPhone supports cheap charging, but once again, more money is needed to use it. The iPhone XS didn't bring anything revolutionary to the table. Just as every S upgrade by Apple, this phone is simply just better compared to the predecessor. More speed, more stability, and all around more everything. That's what this device is good for. Honestly, no matter what you put onto it, it will deliver. Whatever you choose to do, it will perform and it will do it fast. All this comes with a price, however. Apple retails this phone in Europe for around 1,150 euros, and to be honest, this is its only real flaw. It's just too expensive. It is true that this is a beast that will not let you down, but we are not sure if it's worth the price. If you want to get a really capable iPhone, we recommend choosing last year's iPhone 10. if you can find it sealed since Apple discontinued selling it. How do you like the iPhone XS? We'd like to hear your opinion in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or you would like another device being reviewed, let us know either here or on our Facebook page. If you like this review, like us on Facebook, leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Sit back and relax as we're working hard on new material for you.